laser range finders. Doesn't matter what kind of shooter you are, whether you are a target guy, a hunter, or a tactical maniac, having a device that can quickly and solidly lock down a distance for you is an indispensable tool in my opinion. Even if you can do it by analog with the optics you already have or uh, coarsely by sight, having a device that can laze, spit you an, out an answer is just a great thing. And in my humble opinion, everybody should own it. I have like five or six of them that I have uh, acquired over the course of my adult life. And uh, the technology, though it has improved drastically over that time, is pretty ubiquitous uh, as far as laser rangefinders are concerned. It's, by today's standards, it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, laser goes out, hits target, bounces back, device reads the difference, gives you a number. Pretty simple stuff, right? Today, that all changes. What I have here is the next evolution of laser rangefinder technology. This is the Monarch 7 IVR. This thing breaks the mold and sets the bar higher than any other laser rangefinder before it, and it is going to change the way laser rangefinders are made from here on out. That's what's coming up next on the VSO Gun Channel. All right, the Monarch 7 IVR from Nikon Sport Optics. It's pretty hard for me personally to get excited about another laser rangefinder until this. We're gonna go straight for the kill here. This laser rangefinder combines laser rangefinding technology with Nikon's industry standard camera technology. What that means is what you get with this thing is image stabilization in your laser rangefinder that has not been seen before. I don't know what number to put on this thing. Nikon claims 80% vibration reduction through their laser rangefinder. I can get behind that number. This thing is absolutely excellent. I have one of their other optics. I use it for, uh, for use when I'm bow hunting. Does a lot of the same stuff this thing does, but it's bouncing all over the place, especially when you're sitting in a tree stand and you're really contorted up. Something like this makes a huge, huge difference. In addition to that mind blow that just happened, this thing will also do actual distance and angular corrected distance out to 1,000 yards in increments of 0.1 yards. It'll also do meters as well. All that is accomplished with two buttons, one on top, one on the left. Left side is the mode button. Push the mode button, allows you to go in, change any settings you want, whether you're working in actual distance mode or angular corrected distance mode, or if you want to change the units that you're working in, whether you're working in meters or yards. Top button is the operation button, and it also engages that image stabilization that we talked about earlier. And you can hold it down for a continuous laze if you've got a moving target or if you just want to hit something once, go ahead and hit that. It'll turn off by itself. Thing is operated with one, open this thing, I can't hardly feel my fingers, one CR2 battery. It goes right in the bottom there. If I can find my cap. And we're back. Focus adjustment on the back side. Simply spin the ocular right here. It allows you to change the focal depth of the optic really easy to use it's not overly loose so that it bumps out but it's not overly hard so if you've got like cold hands or something like i've got right now you can easily move it and it's not going to give you any problems lanyard attaches right here at the back take it off don't use it doesn't matter uh, it has one of those things that allows you to it's got a little bead in the center so if you want to use this and then cinch it down on your neck like if you got to strangle yourself or something like that you can or if you want it to sit at a particular height. It depends on your personal preference. I usually run them all the way out like this. And it comes in a nice little carrying case here with an attached carabiner on the back so you can clip it onto your gear. Enough yakking about this thing. What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna get some guns out 
and do some shooting with this thing at a couple different ranges, see how this thing works, and we're gonna do some high angle stuff as well. Coming up right now on the VSO Gun Channel. Wow, can you say weather changing? Hashtag winter is coming. It's like a day after I filmed the last segment and we have snow everywhere. So what we're gonna do here today is we're gonna test the angular correction component of the Monarch 7 IVR. What we've got here is one of our open field tree stands on the farm. We're gonna hop up in this thing. We have a target down over the hill at 170 yards. We're gonna laze it with the distance function only, not the angular correction, but we are gonna laze it with the angular correction as well so we know what the actual number is. Then we're gonna take that same target, stick it on a flat and see what the difference is between the two. So. Today, what we're gonna be using is 300 blackout. At 170 yards, the Freedom Munitions Hush should give us a fair amount of drop so we don't have to do this test at like three, four, five, six hundred yards or something like that. Because it's subsonic, it should be traveling under the sound barrier and it's gonna drop out of the air relatively quickly so we should be able to see a difference. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start shooting this thing. I don't even know where it's zero. We're gonna go ahead and dial it up so that we're hitting uh, consistently on the plate down over the hill. Then we're gonna go stick it on the flat. You guys will recognize this rifle as the rifle that we use for all of our 300 blackout suppressor testing. This is the one with the Midwest Industries SP handguard on it so that we can run suppressors underneath of the handguard. Speaking of suppressors, we have a Surefire SOCOM 300 on the front of this thing here. If you guys missed the video for that, that video is available for view both on Full 30 and YouTube. So that's enough yakking, enough messing around. We're gonna go ahead, hop up inside this tree stand, get set up and do some shooting. All right, you're hitting at the base of the target. Okay. Give me 10 MOA. Sending. Good. Again. Sending. All right. Uh, keep shooting. Give me. Uh, My crosshairs are right here on the shoulders, like between the shoulders, and right below the throat. Okay. Yeah. Give me a, just a couple more so we can make sure that we got a group. Okay. One more. Cool. All right, down here at 170, or quote unquote 170. What right. do you got here, Doc? This is where I was putting the crosshairs at. This was my point of aim. Yeah. There's my point of impact here. Yeah, so what is that? It's a 20 inch target, so roughly what, 15 inches off of? Between 15 and 20, something like yeah, that. Yeah, somewhere between 15 and 20 inches of drop. So, um, what we can expect, guys, is because we're running in distance mode, we're going to see a, we're probably going to see a little bit of a shift down when we're shooting on a flat. So I fully expect to miss this target when we put it at a true 170 yards. Right. And that's my speculation on this. We'll know when we get to the flat, but I guarantee you it's not going to be 15 inches no. uh, at that distance. No, uh, with the 300 blackout, that's for sure. So those, those 220s, they really drop out of the air. So we're gonna load this thing up, get back to the flat. Go. All right, high speed. Same point of aim, see what you got. Try again. Keep on shooting. That was way low. Yep, keep on going. Just keep holding the same point of aim. Is that it? Yep. It sounded like port pop to me. That was it. Yep. 
So, go ahead and swivel around here and talk to us for a second. Yeah. Uh, high speed shooting from the Israeli seated position. Uh, first of all, what did you think about that? Super stable? Yeah, it was stable, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what we saw was that we were hitting significantly lower than last time because now we're on a flat. So when we're talking about shooting on a flat versus an angle, the target is actually closer when we're shooting on an angle than it is when we're shooting on a flat. So the exposure to gravity is greater, so the bullet is going to drop more. We took measurements with the angle corrected mode at the pillbox and we were getting about 165 yards instead of 170. Translate to here where we're shooting at a true 170 and 300 blackout, 220 grains going like 900 feet per second, falling out of the air, completely missed the target. So we don't know exactly how much we're talking here, but you can definitely see through the camera view that we're, we're definitely missing the target by a decent margin. So that is the value of angle corrected range, that is for sure. It is. Can I get up out of the snow now? Yeah, go ahead. It's your fault for wearing only jeans. Hey, don't give me that shit, I love my jeans. One last thing that we wanted to highlight on the Monarch 7 IVR was the differential ranging mode. This unit has the ability to screen out an interference between you and a target. Say perhaps you have a deer on the other side of the woods. Typically, you will have an issue lazing through that woods. This unit can exclude the signals coming from target one, the woods, and give you the true range of the intended target, the deer. That's all for our look at the Monarch 7 IVR. If you guys found this video informative, please click that subscribe button and pass it around to all of your friends. Thanks for watching the VSO Gun Channel and we'll see you guys on a future video.